I still have a hard time loving myself. I still have a hard time um, finding value and worth in just being me. I didn't realize how hard this would be to talk about because I talk about sex all the time. It was painful to talk about. <laughs> I didn't think it would be this painful. I'm told truth about not waiting for marriage is I became a person that I never wanted to be. Love is not only wanting you when your clothes are off. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is me, this is my life, and this is my sex testimony. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Katie Patterson here, and today we're gonna to be talking about sex. It's not really a conversation that the church really likes to have, not that your church individually, but the church as a whole. We don't really have that conversation and we don't really like to talk about it. But today I'm gonna to give you all the details. Well. Well, maybe not all the details, telling you about my sex testimony. A popular YouTuber named Melina made this video a couple years ago talking about the untold truth of her saving herself from marriage. Me, today, I'm gonna be telling you the untold truth about not waiting for marriage, about my hurt and my pain and, and everything about myself and my experience with that. The world makes sex look, how glamorizing it looks, and kind of a bit about my testimony. My testimony video is still gonna be coming out soon. I'm still working on it, but for now, we're just gonna be talking about my sex testimony. Hey guys, so actually I'm just editing this video right now and I forgot to tell you guys how this video is actually going to run. So the first part of the video is me talking about my sex testimony. My testimony-ish, not my full testimony, but just about how I viewed sex, how I lost my virginity, how it got progressively worse, and there on. Next part of the video, so the second half, I would say, what it did to my life and me and how I treated boys and how I treated them. And the third part is me of talking about how it affects my life now and my baggage now and what I sit with with my relation with Dawson, with my friendships, with my family, just how I view myself now. So it gets progressively a lot more vulnerable, and progressively a lot more raw. And I didn't think this video was gonna affect me that much, but honestly, I'm just, I was like crying by the end of this video. So I really challenge you guys to actually watch the video to its full length because there you'll see my heart You'll see my sex testimony. You'll see how sex affected me back then and how it still affects me now. So I really, really suggest that you guys watch the full entire video to understand my story and understand my life or at least skip through the parts of here's my sex testimony. Here's how it affected me back then and how it affects me now in my daily life. So... Yeah, love you guys. Bye. Just a disclaimer, all these experiences are my experiences. I'm going to be very raw and very vulnerable with you guys. And I'm not bl blaming the boys at all. These boys, they're just as much as a sinner as I am. They're just as much as a broken person as I am. No way, shape, or form better than any of these guys, any of the guys I slept with or have done stuff with or any of these people who I'm talking about. They're all loved, they're all wanted, and they're all fully known by God. They are not the exception. I am not the exception, and you are not the exception. So just keep that in mind in this video that I'm not bashing these boys. These boys boys are literally the same as me like I am just as bad as these boys in the past so like, it was all consensual it was all my doing it was all me putting myself in those situations because I wanted uh, you'll I'll talk about it in this video but I wanted sex I wanted to feel loved and validated so just keep that in mind I don't want it to seem like I'm bashing all these guys and oh I hate men because that is not what I'm saying at all I'm just as bad as any of these guys so some backstory of how I viewed sex is really important and how I had a porn addiction for 10 years. In that porn addiction, I was watching those people and when I was seeing these beautiful girls, that's what I equated love to look like when your clothes were off, was when attention was drawn by my body. That's what I equated love to look like and that's how I thought I would be loved and valued and wanted when my clothes were off and that's all I had ever known is because all these videos about girls who were so loved and so full of attention and they were getting all these attention from guys when their clothes were off. And so I kind of had a really destructive mindset that that was all my body was worth, was just a transaction, was just an attention seeker, was that's how I would get love, that's how I would get attention, that's how I would get validation, that's how I'd feel this, this void inside of me searching for love. Having that addiction for 10 years and hiding that, I never knew how destructive that would actually look like in my everyday life, in my relationships, in my friendships and everything. Keep that in the back of your mind that like, this is all I thought I was worth was because I was watching porn and that's how I got my validation and love from mindset from porn. And also when you look on social media, when you look on movies, when you look at music, when you look at all these things, if you really look into it, every single time somebody feels loved, in my mind, was when they were having sex. If you look 
subconsciously I was filling myself with all these things that was affecting my mental state and my mind that that's all I was valued for. Movies, music, social media. I was like, that's how I'm getting attention. That's how I'm getting love. That's how boys want me. Boys want me when my clothes are off. So my mindset was, okay, let's, let's take off the clothes. Let's do whatever you can. Let's let the boys want you. My worth quickly became dependent on the boy thought of my body and if he wanted me or not. And so I would do things to get their attention. And going into grade, I would send nudes to multiple people at the same time. I would give little pieces of myself, not exactly sex, but still foreplay, and, and, and that's just as bad as sex, but pieces of myself, and I'm not gonna name the number, but it was high. Also, part of my testimony is I dated this guy on and off for about four years, and he was my first love. I still love him to death. He's great, and he was a Christian. On those off times when I wasn't dating this guy, I was just trying to fill this void, and I was going to different people, and I was going to different people, and taking my clothes off, and doing stuff for them, because I wanted that love, I wanted that validation. Foreplay and nudes was enough back then. Like, as long as I did that for them, they would stay, and I thought that was okay. High school, my mentality was, let's just get this attention, let's just get this love, let's just fill this void inside of me. And then after high school, the level kind of stepped up. I started going to the bar and all the bar guys just wanted sex, but I hadn't done it at that point yet to that extent. But I quickly realized that wasn't enough for them. Every single weekend I would go to the bar searching for that love and validation, but I didn't want to have sex yet because I thought that was the biggest sin. That's how I wouldn't get into heaven. That's false. I was just as much of a sinner as when I was having sex or when I was doing foreplay. There's no amount of sin level I guess. And so yeah, I started dressing a lot, a lot more profitably to get these guys' attention and I would make out with them for the night and do stuff with them at night, but then when they wanted sex, I'd kind of back out and be like, no. And then I got rejected and I remember just feeling like, why can't these guys stay? Why can't, am I not getting enough? Why am I not getting this enough love or attention? Like, what else do they want from me? And I quickly realized it was sex. So how I realized this was I met this guy at the bar and I thought he was like my dream guy, like I, looks wise and everything like that. And we went out after and it was cool and it was good. And then I saw him again and he kind of just dropped talking to me and I was like, what is going on with this guy? And he told my sister that I was too good for him, like too innocent. And that really honestly broke me. That was like, that was, that was like, holy crap, this guy doesn't think I'm good enough for him. This guy doesn't think that I am worth it enough or that he doesn't want me because I won't give this to him. And honestly, this guy did not have bad intentions. Like he was honestly probably protecting my heart, protecting my boundaries and, and like he was being a nice guy. Uh, should he have said that I was too good and innocent for him that he didn't want me? No, but he honestly was trying to protect my heart. But I took that in bad intentions as in like, I'm gonna show him weekend I met a different guy and within a week I slept with him and it was a random guy from a bar random guy I met like a couple times at the bar and I was just like okay let's get it over with let's get it done like let it doesn't even matter anymore I've given myself to so many people let's just get her done I remember driving there and I remember everything in me telling me like don't go like don't go I went and I had sex with him and I left and I never really talked to him again and I didn't really think it affected me that much like I remember going home and like being like, okay, that wasn't bad. Like that wasn't, I'm fine. Like I'm fine. There's no soul ties. There's no attachments. There's no hurt. There's nothing. It's just sex. Like it's just whatever. And so after that, I kind of was like, eh, sex is not a big deal. Sex is whatever. So I started to normalize sex in my life. And I was like, yeah, sex is just like kissing. Sex is just like, like making out with somebody like it just it doesn't even matter and so after that i met this boy who is a very big part of my testimony so i will make that video and talk more about him i met this boy and i started dating him pretty quick and i thought he was my dream guy like he said he was christian like he said that he believed in god so i was like kid great like he, he wasn't he wasn't a christian he was exactly like how i was i called myself a christian but i was not actually a christian uh very quickly we started sleeping together I remember the first time I actually slept with him, like 10 minutes later, he told me he was still in love with his ex-girlfriend and I should have left at that point because it felt as though I had to keep up and I had to have sex with him to make him want me and make him stay and make him think I'm good enough. And so I started dressing way more provocatively. I started to um, be at his beck and call and like just, just having this sex as a transaction and I wasn't realizing how bad it actually was affecting my 
worth and I didn't realize how attached this guy actually was getting how much it hurt me and how much how destructive my mindset was like my mindset was literally I'm gonna have sex with him to make him stay I'm gonna have sex with him because it's like a transaction like sex wasn't beautiful it wasn't this god-given thing it wasn't like wow like it wasn't it wasn't this like I feel loved I feel special I feel valued I feel accepted I feel comfortable it was I'm a transaction. It's a I'm a piece of meat. It's a this is how to make a stay. This is this is what I think love looks like. This is what I think is okay. This is good. It's good. If it feels good, then it must be good for my health. It must be good for my mental state too. But what I didn't realize back then that I do realize now looking back in is that I let a lot of things slide in that relationship because I was having sex with him. How every single time we were off, I would just go to other guys to sleep with and I would sleep around and I was sleeping around when me and this guy were broken up and I just wanted love. Like I wanted love so badly. It was just a transaction and it was just like, okay, you're just a body. I'm just body. Let's just do this because it feels good. But I don't want you anywhere else. And, and I started treating these guys like crap. I treated these guys like they were a piece of me. I treated these guys like they were just a body. That's all they were good for, that they were a transaction. Like it wasn't the guys just treating me like that. Like I was just as bad as them. I, I was manipulative. I was toxic. I used these boys for what I could get out of them and left them aside. And I regret it a lot and I wish I could go back, but I can't. No, but sex wasn't this beautiful God-given thing and it turned me into somebody I was I never wanted to be I used these guys I would throw them away I would treat them like sex is all they're good for that yeah it just was wow it was just looking back at who I was It makes me think like, how can God even love a person like that? But he does. But it makes me look at how could God love me when I was like that? And wow, just like this God given gift that he has given us, like how the world and how I misconstrued that. I'm not proud of what I did and I'm not proud of who I was. And, and that's why I'm telling you guys this because I think it's important to talk about and how sex made me view people as an object, as a transaction, as, as just for me to get my fill and that's it. Like just fill me up and that's all you're good for. And wow, yeah. You know, when I look at my past and I look at me And I just think of how broken I was and how broken these boys are too and how broken our world is, how lust is just so prevalent in our society, how it's just like normalized, that sex is just normalized to do it with whoever you want and people are just trying to fill this void inside them that only God can fill it. God can only give you the love that you're craving. The last time me and this boy the boy who I met at the bar who's Christian who cheated on me, a boy. I told him that I just wanted him for sex and I told him that. And I told him that's all, that's all he's basically good for. That I don't want a relationship, that I don't want him at all. Except for sex and I started sneaking around and telling my family that I was going to other places but I was really going to this guy's house and I didn't realize how attached I was getting and how hurt I was getting hurt by myself, by him, how I was hurting him. I was so attached and I didn't even realize it. And I wanted him to be hurt and I wanted him to feel the pain that he hurt me and I wanted him to, and that's not okay. So yeah, I just started sleeping with the guy and telling him all these lies and telling him about all these guys I was sleeping with on the side and I just really wanted to hurt him. Like I was a really bad manipulator and a really bad toxic person and I regret what I did to him and I regret the pain I put him through even if he denies it. I still regret that. 
So I'm not going to tell you how this story ends because it's a big part of my testimony and I want to make a testimony video about everything and this boy will come up again. What I want to say is the untold truth about not waiting for marriage is the devil makes sex look glamorizing. The devil makes sex look like the, this romantic, special thing before marriage and this this fire, this passion. But what he doesn't like to tell you is the consequences. He doesn't like to tell you about the baggage you're gonna bring into relationships now, um, the hurt and the pain that you go through. He doesn't like to tell you about the attachments. He doesn't like to tell you about the pregnancy scares or... I'll make a video more about soul ties just because it's a really controversial topic, but personally, you get attached to the person you sleep with, whether you like it or not. And you may not realize it until you're out of it, but that was me, that was my experience that I didn't realize of how attached I got to this person. But the devil doesn't like to tell you the consequences of sin. So now I'm gonna talk about the baggage that I carry into my relationships now, even though I am saved, I'm a born again believer, but I still do carry baggage from my past and from sex. And the untold truth is that I still carry baggage into my relationships now. And I still carry that baggage of, I don't feel loved because my clothes aren't off. I don't feel loved right now. I don't have the feeling of love because he's not wanting to take off my clothes. My relationship with Dawson is obviously we're not having sex and we're not doing foreplay and we're not, and we have really strict boundaries. And sometimes my the enemy can really use lies against me saying that Dawson doesn't love you because he's not doing that. And I've had to like, work with God and like God has really worked on my heart rewiring how I feel loved and how I feel valued. Another baggage I carry is I don't really feel worth or value sometimes like when I'm dressing modest and when I am not showing parts of myself like I don't really feel valued and that's another piece of me that the Lord has really shaped my value for me because I don't really feel valued sometimes and I don't really feel worth and I don't really feel love sometimes. I wish I could say that after you come to Christ just everything just gets fixed but the Lord's still working on me. I still carry baggage. I still still have a hard time loving myself. I still have a hard time um, finding value and worth in just being me and just being a Christian and that's the untold truth about wait, not waiting for marriage is your worth, your your baggage, your identity, your value. The enemy really misconstrues all of those things. The enemy sucks. But the Lord is bigger and the Lord is stronger and he is my strength, he is my value, he is my confidence and even when I don't feel that, I turn to God because I know that sex is never gonna fill me. Sex is never gonna give me the value that I crave or the love or the identity. Only Christ can give me that, only Christ can fill me. And that's why we're talking about this today is because I want you guys to know that the untold truth of not waiting for marriage is there is consequences for that even if you don't realize it. I still struggle with hating my body. I still struggle with my worth and my identity and with modesty. And I really still struggle with all those things. That's why I'm talking about this with you guys and that's why I'm being real with you guys is because I wish I waited and I, and you know, every single sin or every single wound in my heart is a trophy of God's grace, but and I know he's using it for his good and glory now, but honestly, I wish I would have waited. And there are days where I just like, I regret it so much and I know I can't go to the past and I know I can't change what I did or how I hurt these boys or how I hurt myself or how I was a manipulator and a liar. And I wish I could change that, but I can't. But the Lord has constantly changed me and he took that girl and he made her into the girl that you're looking at today. 
and that's a godly woman. I mean, it does like to tell me lies all the time, but I just constantly focus on God and who he calls me, and that's a daughter of a king. I'm, I wasn't too far gone, and you're not the exception. If you look at who I was and now who I am, you're not the exception. You're never too far gone. You're going to deal with baggage and struggles and, and burdens when you come to Christ. That's just a fact. This time the Lord's carrying my burdens, my struggles. He's the one who carries me, and I'm not doing this by myself. Wow, that was painful to ever talk about. I didn't think it would be this painful. You know, and I just think about all those guys that I absolutely used, and I pray for them all the time, and I pray for every single boy I've slept with and hooked up with because I want them to come to Christ and I want them to know they're not too far gone and, and you know I've gotten a lot of hate for coming to Christ after used to sleeping around and used to go to bars and from the people I hooked up with but it's easier to forgive them because I know that I used to be them wish that I regret doing it because I became a person that I never wanted to be that's not love Love is not only wanting you when your clothes are off. Love is not only being accepted when your clothes are off. Love is not a transaction. Love is not. Love is not treating someone like a piece of meat or objectifying them. And that's what I thought it was. Love was all of those things, but that's a fake form of love that the enemy uses against us. You can still wait. You're so loved, wanted, and fully known by God. And he wants you with open arms to come home. And I wish, if I could go back, I wish somebody would have told me all those things. And I wish somebody would have told me everything that I'm telling you right now. So that's why I do my TikTok, that's why I do my social media mission field, because I wish somebody told me these things, and that's why I'm telling you guys. Hey guys, that was a very raw and vulnerable video. I don't know if it's all mumble jumbled, but I'm gonna try my best to edit it so it's not. And I hope this helps. And I hope you know that you're not too far gone, that God loves you and he wants you. So, until next time, bye guys.